Hello, our very last unit will be on global change. We're going to go over ozone depletion and climate change and then just all the ways that we see a loss of biodiversity. So we're going to start off with stratospheric ozone depletion. The stratospheric part is important because the stratospheric ozone is the good ozone. We want that ozone, so it's a bad thing that it's being depleted. It's the tropospheric ozone, which we talked about in the air pollution unit, that's the bad ozone. That's down here where we can breathe um, and it's an air pollutant. We don't want that. We want to decrease the tropospheric ozone, increase the stratospheric ozone. So the stratosphere, like I said, is the layer above the troposphere. It's way, way, way up there. So all the weather, all the, you know, our air travel, um, all that's down here. Uh, with some exceptions, but, you know, like passenger airline, it's going to be down here in the troposphere. Um, so the ozone layer is found about 20 to 30 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, and its main purpose is to absorb UV radiation before it can get to Earth. So if we break the UV radiation into the different frequencies, the most damaging is the UVC and the UVB. And fortunately, that's what is absorbed the most. So if we didn't have that, we'd see a much higher concentration of the, this UV radiation, um, and that does have damaging effects. It lessens some UVA, which is why, you know, it's, there is still some. You still should wear sunscreen, things like that, but it's not nearly as bad as it could be. These ozone molecules are broken up by what are called ozone-depleting substances or compounds, so they're man-made molecules that are capable of breaking apart the ozone molecules majority of these are halocarbons. If we break that apart, halo means it has a halogen in it, such as chlorine, fluorine, bromine, anything in that group 7a in the periodic table. Um, and they come from substances such as refrigerants, solvents, aerosols, foam blowing agents. Um, these molecules float up into the stratosphere. And so this example, by the way, has the CFC. So it's got a carbon, one fluorine, and three chlorines. Uh, they can break apart be, uh, because of the UV radiation. It breaks a lone little chlorine away, and that chlorine will then go and bond to one oxygen in the O3 molecule, and then that forms chlorine monoxide and a diatomic oxygen molecule. So this is a much more stable molecule, um, so it would rather be like this anyway, so if it's going to take away the chlorine or the one oxygen, cool. It doesn't care. Well, there's also just because atoms are a thing, there are lone oxygens floating around in the stratosphere. So it um, will then run into this oxygen here, and then this oxygen wants to be with this oxygen way more than it wants to be with chlorine. So then it bonds to the other oxygen, becomes diatomic oxygen. Again, very stable compared to this or this. And that leaves the chlorine exposed to go find another O3 molecule and break that one up. And it'll just keep on doing that over and over and over again. Um, it takes a really long time to settle out of the atmosphere. So before it does that, it can damage hundreds to thousands of molecules of um, ozone. So we call it the ozone hole, uh, but it's really not the best name for it um, because it's not a hole where like there's nothing there. It's really more of a depletion, um, but I'm still going to call it the ozone hole because everyone else calls it the ozone hole. <laughs> uh, so this ozone hole forms over um, Antarctica, in the South Pole. Uh, the reason for that is during Antarctic winter, which, remember, is the opposite of our seasons. So if it's summer here, it's winter there. Winter here, it's summer there. So you just kind of have to, you know, think differently about the seasons. So it... Um, during the Antarctic winter, there's this polar vortex that traps cold air over the South Pole. And it gets so, so cold that you have clouds forming up into the stratosphere. And so, because it reaches all the way into the stratosphere, which, remember, is 20 to 30 kilometers above ground, this is not a normal phenomenon, these, um, this cold air traps in those ozone-depleting compounds, and that speeds up the depletion. So they're, they're trapped there, and they have nothing to do but just to damage all of those um, ozone molecules. So we see that um, 
that ozone hole peak in Antarctic spring, so like around September, October, because um, that's when it starts to warm up. And then because it warms up, that polar vortex breaks down, the um, stratosphere clouds dissipate, and then we have a uh, like we have more air coming in from the north, and so with more circulation coming in, it brings in more ozone, and then it gets better and better and better until about Antarctic fall, and it just repeats the process. So this is taken in 2016. Oh, they made a typo. I should, I should go yell at climate.gov, except I really can't because I made a typo on my last screen. Uh, we see in the uh, September, that's when it's the ozone concentration is the least. And then in the summer, or it's not summer, and it's fall, that's when it's the highest. But then it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Uh, with increase, or sorry, with decrease of ozone um, concentration, we see an increase of UV radiation because if they're not there to absorb the UV radiation, that UV radiation gets through. Uh, that has damaging effects to DNA. And so with damaging effects to DNA, um, that affects how the organism functions. So we see an increase of things like skin cancer and cataracts in humans, and it also disrupts plant growth. So that um, could mean a decrease of agricultural viability, fewer crops, um, also means fewer like phytoplankton, zooplankton, so things on the bottom of the food web. And if there's any time you have a um, damage to the bottom of the food web, you have damage to the whole ecosystem, the whole food chain, the whole food web, because they all rely on, you know, they rely on that photosynthesis to happen. If they can't do it, or if it gets depleted in some way, that's going to affect everybody. So, again, I said this before, but I just want to really point out that these are two different types of ozones we're talking about. If it's on the ground, then the troposphere, where we breathe, um, it's called surface level ozone, tropospheric ozone, photochemical smog. It's got a lot of different names, but that's the bad one. We want the good one, which is up in the stratosphere. We do not breathe in the stratosphere. We'd have to go really, really, really far up into the atmosphere to get to the stratosphere. So this is not the same. And I know it'd be really convenient if we could just make ozone down here and just set it up there, but it's not possible. Um, you can research that for yourself. <clears throat> All right. So we need ozone. It's bad to have these ozone depleting compounds. <coughs> Excuse me. So in 1987, a bunch of countries came together in Montreal and they're like, hey, how about we stop? And I was like, okay, let's stop. And this is one of the very few times in this entire class we get to have a positive thing because it has worked and it's come from a global agreement to fix a problem and and that's it. The end. Like, it worked. We have seen a tremendous decrease of ozone depleting compounds. There are still some because um, they do last in the atmosphere for a really long time. Uh, there are still some countries that are producing it because they don't have the resources to switch over to other, um, other chemicals that don't deplete the ozone. Um, but it's worked. And we've seen a decrease of that ozone hole in the Antarctic spring um, every year. It's gotten better and better. It's supposed to, you know, be all fixed, I think, I don't know, 30, 50 years. I forget. But it's it's getting there. So it shows that we are, as a species, capable of cooperating and fixing problems. So, yay. Okay. Moving on, so the major substance that we switched to to get away from CFCs and HCFCs um, are called hydrofluorocarbons. So they do not deplete the ozone layer. However, we found that they're strong, are strong greenhouse gas. So just one molecule of um, these hydrofluorocarbons are capable of doing like the same heat trapping as like thousands, I think, of carbon dioxide molecules. I forget the exact number, but they're really, really, you know, they're really, really strong. So now we've got a new problem. 
of we don't want these either because we don't want global warming and it's kind of already a thing so we've got to you know fix it the best way we can so in t october 2016 uh these countries met again and made an amendment to the montreal protocol uh, called the kigali amendment uh, to phase out ahfc's um so that we can cut down on greenhouse gases um i think this was a typo i think i was going to say like provided they able to amend it in their countries or something like that okay uh that is all for this section we only have three in this whole unit like i said there's gonna be one on climate change and then one on loss of biodiversity and i'll be coming out with those um in the weeks to come